Finding a good intermediate guitar lesson is about as frustrating as unsubscribing from an email list where you have to type in the email that you want unsubscribed from when I always get the feeling like I'm actually subscribing to more email lists every time I do that. But anyways, I'm gonna try to fix that intermediate thing because uh, again, it's, it's always hard to find resources for exactly where you're at. So we're gonna assume you know a little bit about scales. We're gonna do a quick refresher on them and chords to kind of combine a few different playing techniques to get something that is gonna sound like this. Okay, so we've got a couple different things going on. I'm rocking out the Court A6, really awesome acoustic guitar, super affordable. They have been nice enough to sponsor this video, so check out the link below if you're interested at all. I think it sounds pretty good, plays really, really good. And we're gonna say, start with three chords, all right? B minor, 11, G major seven, D major seven. Okay, you can think of this as a six, four, one in the key of D major. Okay, we're gonna go over everything, but let's just talk about the chord voicings first. B minor 11. You can always use this chord voicing as a replacement for B minor. The B is the seventh fret on the low E string. I've got my middle finger. I've got my bruised middle finger holding that one down. I've got my ring finger holding the seventh fret on the D string, my pinky seventh fret on the G string, and then my pointer finger, fifth fret on the B string. Okay, so this is chord voicing number one. Again, this could easily be a B minor bar chord, we use it up here, which we're gonna actually take everything and put it in a different position by the end of this video, but the way I'm strumming this, I'm using a pick. I'm hitting the low E string by itself, and then a down up in the middle of the string set to kind of get a little bit of a dynamic where it's not just, that's beginner playing. If you're just hitting all the strings, you gotta break it up a little bit, make some, like that, right? So root down up on like the D and G strings. And then that last down stroke that I'm getting, I may be getting the D, G and B string together. Okay, then I'm gonna go to the next chord, G major seven. All right, so the G is the third fret on the low E string. Now you'll notice that like the actual grouping of my fingers doesn't really have to change that much because my ring finger and my pinky can stay together, right? So it's really not that bad to slide that to the fourth fret and then have my pointer finger grab the G on the low E string and my middle finger grab the D on the B string, third fret each, All right? So that's kind of like a little pro chip right there. Intermediate playing pro chip. Keep these fingers together because there's a lot of cool voicing that you can use with these fingers kind of just paired. It's an easy way to kind of get between those chords, right? So root down, up, down. You'll notice as I'm transitioning, I'm getting a muted down and up stroke. Down, up, G chord, right? So I'm separating the G note, the bass, from that rest of the chord. In fact, if you take the rest of the chord by itself and lose that G, it's really a B minor. That's why they work so well together. Okay, then we're really making our way home. Surprise, surprise, it was the key of D all along. My pointer finger is on the D on the A string, fifth fret. Ring finger, seventh fret on the D string. Bruised middle finger, sixth fret on the G string. Pinky, seventh fret on the B string. Okay, so all together. Then we have. Okay, the next part is gonna come from a scale. So we've already got three cool different chord voicings. If those voicings are hard to get to, you can really easily change those into power chords, just like this. Just like that, just track the root notes. Again, depending on where you are in your intermediate to advanced journey, tracking root notes is super, super helpful, right? So we've got B minor 11, G major seven, G major seven, and then we're going into this. Okay, so where I'm thinking of this conceptually, we don't even have to think of the names of the notes. They're all in the key. The reason that we know that is because remember, I said the sixth chord is where we began, right? That B, the relative minor in the key of D, as it were. If you know what that means. If you don't know what that means, check out my Patreon because I go through like sequential listed uh, lessons to kind of explain all this stuff. Because again, it's hard to like, 
make things in order on YouTube. It's always jumping around and stuff. But if you are interested in the Patreon, it's super cheap uh, monthly. You could probably run through all those classes in one month and just quit it. And hit it and quit it, my guys. So from this, I'm thinking of B minor pentatonic. Okay, so seven ten, seven nine, seven nine, seven nine, seven ten, seven ten. I'm just thinking of the A, D, and G strings because super easy to do, right? They're just two fret reaches each time. Seven to nine, seven to nine, seven to nine. So in context with the chords. Okay? Now to make it sound a little bit less pentatonic y we're just gonna add a little bit of uh, a little bit of pick play in here, right? Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm getting a hammer on on the A string and then a down up on that ninth fret on the A string. Hammer down up. So again from Okay, same thing on the D string. Hammer down up, hammer down up, hammer. Okay, and the nice thing about that is when we're just using it, since they're all the same frets, it's kind of like a symmetrical shape right there. As you're going down, I don't have to worry about maybe overshooting on that pick because my pointer finger is really kind of muting the string below the string that I'm picking. So even if my pick runs in to the next one, I'm not gonna hear it. Okay, so I think that's really a, a cool little riff that comes from the minor scale, the minor pentatonic scale, the relative minor. It's all the same thing in this spot. Uh, again, conceptually, you could think of just the the names of the chords like a E to an F sharp, so on and so forth. But I think the great thing about learning those shapes is you can apply them into your playing. So that B minor, G major seven. D Major seven. And again, that first time I switched it up just because I wasn't ready for it. But the lesson to be learned there is you can always mess around in the minor pentatonic scale. You can do it different every single time. That's why I like a lot of your favorite players, they'll play stuff different live. always kind of just mess around with those same shapes all right so now I do want to have a focused second time around all right because we're gonna take a different concept and kind of shoehorn it in there all right that just came from those minor pentatonic notes I want to have something that follows this D major 7 chord they kind of fits from what we're thinking of a D major 7 chord right so the best way to do that is through an arpeggio, all right? An arpeggio is just a chord played one note at a time. We can really easily do that starting on this D and then just kind of... That's kind of how I think of it, right? It's, it's really the root note. I'm going to the second note of that scale and sliding in to the major third. I'm thinking of that as climbing through a D major chord, right? Because again, we have D, I'm using this as kind of like a platform to get to the major third, which is the ninth fret on the A string. And then into the fifth, which is the seventh fret on the D string. Again, in the D major scale, one, two, three, four, five. That's where these arpeggios come from. And then if we kind of end it, we're kind of back in that pentatonic spot. So I'm thinking of this D major chord. as a way to kind of play through that chord into another shape that I'm super familiar with because we did it on the first time around, and then try to line my hand up with that B minor 11 that I know I'm coming back to, All right? So in context. Second time, let's build off the D chord. So it kind of has the same vibe, but it is a little different. You can just stay on that chord if you want to kind of make some space. 
but I'm always trying to line up that middle finger back there to kind of get back on time because as long as you arrive on the chords on time it doesn't really matter what you play in between you can even go outside of a key to do that but the next thing I want to talk about is how to change the location of the neck that you're doing it that's why the names of the chords are important but knowing what the replacements can also be so remember that first one is B minor 11 we said that could be a replacement for a B minor chord we just make a regular traditional B minor chord kind of bar the second fret ring pinky together again always together that ring and pinky 4d and 4g middle finger three on the b string so again if we just play the regular triad versions of these chords we get b minor g major d and then it's like okay well then do i go down to that spot well guess what these exist in the same spot right if we're thinking of this as being like a B, and we start that kind of pentatonic run just straight down a string, you can do that here. But because now we're going into the B strings territory, we just have to compensate. So it's the same shape, two to four on the D string, two to four on the G string, three to five on the B string. So you do the same thing. I kind of like sliding into that, and then just going back to B minor. G major, D. B minor, G, D. The original way, and see how they kind of, they fit together, but it does kind of give a little bit of variance, a little bit of variety, and you're kind of playing around more. You feel like you know what you're doing, even though you're taking the same shapes and just moving them around. And that's why this is an intermediate guitar lesson. So, hopefully I'm unsubscribed from that list, that mailing list that I talked about at the beginning. It's really been on my mind a lot. I feel like I've been doing a lot of unsubscribing and I'm getting the same amount of spam. I'm not sure what's going on out there, but I'm, I'm trying my best. So uh, feel free to unsubscribe from this channel if you're feeling spammed. And I promise there's nothing shady going on. But uh, yeah, anyways, thanks again to Court for sponsoring the video. Again, awesome guitar. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe switching the strings up. I might do a, an update on that sometime next week. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.